Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Share the harvest. Keep it local. Hello, today we are going to be talking about a summer favorite, summer squash and zucchini. Summer squash and zucchini like soils that are well drained and rich. They can be mulched with a variety of things, but do the very best if they are mulched with black plastic. That will allow the soil to warm and it will reduce weed competition around them. They generally grow best if they are in full sun. They really appreciate being out of the wind. So if you're planting somewhere that is windy, providing some sort of shelter on the side that the wind predominantly comes from is going to give you the best results in getting them established earlier in the season. They also enjoy plenty of room. There are some varieties, particularly for patio gardeners or if you have, just have a small space, that are called bush that are going to be much more compact, but generally you do get a little bit of a reduction in yield if you're planting the bush varieties. So it's a good idea to just kind of plan accordingly depending on what your needs are and what your space availability is. Generally speaking, our summer squash and our zucchinis appreciate being planted when daytime temperatures are above 55 degrees. They like soil temperatures to be above 70 degrees and up to 90 degrees. There's a lot of different ways that you can get your soil temperatures up. You can put black plastic or plastic mulches down, like I mentioned. You can also build, plant in a raised bed or you can plant in, you can actually hill up the soil where you're planning to plant a week or so ahead of your plant, planned planting date. And that will provide you a little bit of extra warmth for those seeds to germinate. They will still germinate at cooler temperatures. It's just going to take them a lot longer to do so. And it will reduce the abil your ability to harvest these squash throughout the season. When you're planning to put them in the ground, you can plant them as seeds. Squash do really well planted from seed. If you are planting from seed, it's a good idea to put at least two to three seeds in each hole and then thin out all but the most vigorous once they start coming up and growing. Generally, you can also plant as you can do transplants, but you do want to make sure that your transplants are a very small plant with no more than two to three true leaves. Squash have very sensitive root hairs and they don't tolerate transplanting very well once they get much larger than that. So you want to make sure that you're timing it very carefully if you are starting your own seeds or if you're purchasing seedlings from a nursery. Generally speaking, our, our summer squash and zucchini really appreciate regular deep watering but they do like to dry out between those waterings. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're watering nice and deeply. You can do this with a garden, a little garden trowel or a hori hori or even a screwdriver just to assess the, the soil moisture levels and make sure that you do let it dry out. They don't like to have their feet continually wet and that will reduce your productivity. You can fertilize prior to planting as well as once the vines begin to really spread, but you don't need to fertilize a lot. Um, good way to fertilize prior to planting is to actually amend the fertilizer into the planting hole and mix it in. That way it's really available for those roots as they need it as they're starting to grow. And you can, once the plant is growing, you can do what's called side dressing. You can put the fertilizer down and kind of mix it into this, the top layer of soil and water in nicely the next time you water. There are some issues you might come across with summer squash and zucchini. Powdery mildew is one of the most common and generally is almost inevitable in a lot of our crops. There's a couple ways that you can resolve powdery mildew with a lot of our zucchini crops. You can actually succession plant them. You can let one grow and once you start get like about a month after you planted your first one, plant another one. That way you've got a new one coming up with fresh fruit uh, that isn't as susceptible to the powdery mildew. You can also prune out the older leaves that have more powdery mildew, leaving at least seven to ten leaves on the, the ends of the vines. 
You might also see pollination issues. That's what's pictured in this image here. This is a fruit that just didn't get pollinated. And so it's kind of starting to wither. It's starting to yellow. Eventually it will drop off. Pollination issues happen in the early spring, largely because of potentially because of insufficient pollinators, also potentially because the ratio of male to female flowers just isn't quite up there. Sometimes it just takes a little while before you really start seeing pollinators or po good pollination on your fruit. You might also see blossom end rot where it would look somewhat similar to this picture, but it would be a little bit blackened on the tip there. Blossom end rot is usually a watering issue. So if you're not watering reliably, or if you're watering way too much and then letting it dry out too much, you might start seeing issues like blossom end rot. Thankfully, it's not a big problem. Uh, improving your watering pro uh, program or your watering schedule will be probably the best way to resolve that as an issue. Summer squash and zucchini are great because they are prolific in the summer. They give us so many different options for harvesting. You can harvest the flowers to use in a stir fry. You can harvest them very, very small and pickle them. Generally speaking, standard use for a zucchini, you pick them at about four to six inches. But you can also, if you get some of those giant ones that happens to almost every gardener, the one that hides, and suddenly you go out there and you have a boat of a zucchini, you can hollow them out and roast them like you would a winter squash. So there's lots of different uses. When you are harvesting your summer squash or your zucchini, make sure to cut them. Um, I like to use a pair of pruners actually, but scissors or a knife work really well as also. And you do want to make sure to get them out of the sun and cool them so that you get the very best longevity out of them. Thank you so much for listening today, and if you do have further questions, you can definitely contact your local CSU Extension office.